population is rising. That's an understatement. More people mean more mouths to feed, and with so many people around the world relying on fish as a source of protein, we continue to need more fish. The oceans might look vast and limitless, but they're not. We have to be careful. If we catch too many fish in one year, the population the next year won't recover. And if we do that year on year, the fish won't be there at all for future generations. The maximum amount of fish we can catch in an area while still allowing future generations to catch as many fish is called the maximum sustainable yield. Unfortunately, that limit has been hit in about 60% of the world's fisheries. And in a further 34%, the limit has been exceeded and the fish populations are declining. Catching fish sustainably is complicated. First of all, you need accurate data on how many fish there are in an area before you know how many you can catch. And fish don't exactly line up for a headcount. Second, which fish you catch within a species matters. If you catch reproductive females or immature fish, you reduce the size of the next generation. And third, unpredictable things like disease can cause population declines. To be safe, sustainable fishing generally involves catching less than the maximum sustainable yield. Over the decades, sustainable or not, we've met the increasing demand of an increasing population by catching more and more fish, made easier by increased fishing fleet sizes freezing technology allowing fleets to stay at sea for longer, factory ships for processing, fish finding scanning technology, trawlers that can dig up everything from the seabed. But this trend could never have gone on forever. Worldwide, despite continuous progress in technology, the supply of wild catch fish has almost plateaued. Our supplies are limited. Like many components of our Earth system, the ocean is a finite resource. With the oceans no longer able to supply enough wild fish to keep up with demand, we found a solution. Aquaculture. Aquaculture is basically fish farming. Like crops or cattle on a farm, fish and other aquatic organisms can be grown in contained areas under controlled conditions, ready to be harvested. Sounds perfect, 
but aquaculture can have its own impact on our oceans. In some cases, natural habitats like mangroves are destroyed and replaced by fish farms. Fish grown in close proximity to each other are more susceptible to disease. The antibiotics and other medicines to treat or prevent disease, as well as the feed, fish waste and anti-fouling agents added, can all be a source of water pollution. What's more, farmed species are often genetically modified, and any escaped individuals might breed with local populations with unknown effects. Escapees might also outcompete other local species and damage populations. Some fish are carnivorous and need to be fed at least partly on products of other fish species. And this is supplied by wild catch fish. This brings us back to square one with limited ocean supplies. There are other ways seafood can be farmed and it doesn't always involve the oceans. One practice is to farm fish in rice paddies, taking advantage of the water that's needed for rice plant growth. Fish farming in tanks rather than rivers and oceans is a good solution to containing pollutants, but the huge water and energy demands, as well as the water treatment requirements, mean this solution is neither perfect nor cheap. One thing is for sure, human populations and therefore demand for protein will continue to rise. So using methods to farm more fish sustainably is going to be essential. This doesn't have to be another tragedy story of humans depleting part of the Earth system. Let's just hope that we act responsibly enough and the next generations can still have the same access to Earth's finite ocean that we have. Thank you.